We're back with DeSundra Jefferson and Kimberly Klasik, and we're going to talk about Democratic donors by state. Very, very interesting map put out by the New York Times, a detailed map of the donors of the 2020 Democratic candidates. It shows particularly individualized donations. Can actually tell you quite a bit about a city and, and, and people, uh, depending on where those donations are coming from. One of the most interesting things I thought was uh, in Manhattan. And that was where the island of Manhattan saw the biggest amount of support to Pete Buttigieg. But then the rest of the, uh, like more in the outer boroughs, we saw support for Bernie Sanders. So it just shows you what the. And Manhattan by the way, that sea of blue elite. across the country yeah. is Bernie Sanders yeah, that's right. dominating. <laughs> that's see they there. actually did a separate map. So you can see everyone else. Yeah. Pulling out the right. blue to be like, well, and, okay, right. if we just take Bernie Sanders aside, here's how everybody else is doing. And then actually, Elizabeth Warren is quite dominant. Quite but Deshandra, let me get your thoughts on this yeah. first because I thought this was a fascinating way to visualize the whole race. I agree and I was surprised about how much support that Bernie has across right. the board. I mean, yeah. let's be honest with you. If you want to talk about media bias, you hear right now Biden versus Harris. Yeah, you don't yeah. hear much about Saunders. He's still out there. He's, He's still number two. Number He's two still number two. With Most his donors. Legs in terms of donors. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and he's done this before. I mean, what yeah. did you think looking at these maps? Yeah. Uh, I was shocked, like anyone else, but I saw, like you said, Elizabeth Warren was yeah. the number two spot. So we're getting yeah. very far left here. So I wonder how this is going to pan out in it's, the end. It's interesting, too, because it really does confirm. They, they showed a map of the D.C. suburbs where, like, the highly educated Bethesda and Nova had all these this donations to Elizabeth Warren. Then you had a government contract workers all supporting Pete Buttigieg. And then yeah. Joe Biden getting African-American support. I, I was like, that's a microcosm. There was, like, bowl. Biden <laughs> Harris. <laughs> Maryland, you yeah. know, yeah, African-American exactly. American support. African-American support. It was, it was like that is the entire race. If you look at the map, in particular, you're right, Crystal, which is the industrial Midwest where Trump is most competitive. Bernie Sanders got the dominates. Yeah. He was dominating. Yeah. Listen, these low dollar, um, you know, donations are an indication of viability. Yeah. You know, we keep talking about electability. Well, Biden's got this. Biden's got mm -hmm. that. Biden's got a lot of name recognition. He has the halo effect from his proximity with um, President Obama. But his money's coming from Wall Street, from Silicon Valley. Right. It's all being bundled. Right. Most yes. of them are max contributions. Right. It doesn't have like actual grassroots, grassroots support. support. When people give yeah. you that five dollars, that ten dollars, that fifty dollars, right. it means something. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, most people don't give to candidates. So when they're even giving a little bit, that's showing that they believe in you and that they're investing in your I message. I mean, that was what struck me too, Kimberly. Is there's just this like article of faith assumption that Bernie Sanders is unelectable, even though every poll essentially shows him beating Trump at this point. And then you look at this map of who's doing well where, and he's supposed to be like so toxic in the heartland and in the industrial Midwest. And clearly, a lot of people are responding to what he's got to say out there. Yeah, so I have to say, I don't completely uh, believe polls because mm -hmm. we saw in 2016 how that sure. kind of shifted. But I am surprised. I'm really surprised. But like you said, if someone donates 5 or $10, usually to me that means you've got my vote, mm -hmm. right? And these oh, are yeah. people that usually do not spend money on any campaign. And these, I mean, right. Sanders is main, the employer for his majority of his donations is Walmart. Number like, one. For somebody who wow. works at Walmart to give you some $5, that means that's a lot of Amazing. money. Right? Five, $10 Amazing. Five, ten at multiple times, that's, that's, that's like a true belief. It is. <laughs> it is. No, it is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable. It and then number two was, was teachers. Um, but I think your point about viability is a really important one to Chandra. Yeah, this tells a different story. But you also understand the Democrats are still afraid of 1972 and McGovern. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, that's just something a certain generation goes of Democrats, deep. you know, goes deep, won't live down, yeah. and it's, they're trying to pass it on to the rest of us. You know, I will be honest with you, we need to see this play out. There's a lot of people I know who have reservations about Bernie Sanders, but if he is the person who, you know, the base chooses as the most electable, listen, he came out of nowhere in 16. I remember talking to my interns and they're like, you know, Bernie Sanders, I'm like, he's a backpincher, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But he really caught on with a lot of people. I mean, he gave Hillary a real run for her money. And I think he's going to give Biden a real run for his money. I'm not sleeping on anything in this Yeah, race. I mean, he's raised yeah. $36 million. It's, you from know, Walmart it's, workers. It's not a joke, right? Not I mean, from Wall Street. Yeah, I mean, yeah. $36 million. And, and Pete Buttigieg is the same way as Joe Biden. He's bundling all this money. And that's why I mentioned Manhattan. I mean, it's great when you're the candidate of Manhattan, but that's not necessarily good for you from an electoral perspective. No. Right? Well, and it shows up in his polls. Yeah. Right? And, and Warren has good support, actually, in Manhattan, too. And you yeah. look at there was this one zip code in Brooklyn that was disproportionate Warren. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> we should go there. Go I think that was Brooklyn Heights. Heights. That was Brooklyn Heights. <laughs> Which is a peak. Also, you know, probably what? Where you can't even buy a townhouse for less than like $10 million. Yeah. Kimberly, I, yeah. I want to get your thoughts on, on how Trump 
versus Bernie would shake out? Because look, I know they're going to, I mean, they're going to attack any of these people as socialists, but he actually calls himself a democratic socialist, so I'm sure mm -hmm. that'll be a main point of attack. But I actually think Bernie is a lot harder to run against because he doesn't have the sort of long-standing personal corruption. He is an outsider, right? He's refused to join the Democratic, mm -hmm. um, to call himself a Democrat in terms of running for Senate. Um, I think he, because of this widespread actual grassroots support and longtime consistent principled stances, I think he's harder to run against than maybe a Joe Biden, who you can basically run the Hillary Clinton playbook against. Right, and it's interesting that you say that because I thought with the whole 2016 race with Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders, I thought had he gotten that primary seat, he might have given Trump a run for his money then, and I am pro-Trump all the way. Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to be very interesting, especially if he wins, because I believe, honestly, it's I'm not going to call him Sleepy Joe, but he is looking a yeah. little bit like <laughs> Sleepy Joe. But he, he misnamed. He was trying to, yeah. you know, call out the... His, his website. Yeah. Well, that and then so um, just recently when he was trying to talk about these two mass shootings, he, he got both of the place names wrong. Right. Yeah. And so Bernie Sanders seems to just have more energy, and I think that would... He does, and he's just he's got a consistent record. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows what Bernie believes. And that's why, you know, they called him a backbencher. That's because he refused to play the establishment go game on. for 40 years. He's the most consistent person that's ever run for the Democratic nomination, as far that's as I'm true. concerned. But I do have to ask, yeah. what kind of bills has he passed? Like, you know, I, I don't see a lot on his record as far as that's what he's done problem. in yeah. office. And so that, I think, might hurt him because, again, Trump can talk about jobs. He can talk about the economy. He can talk Trump about... Well, I think what, but office, I think what Bernie right? Sanders would say to Chandra is... Look at how all my ideas have been adopted yeah. mainstream. And it's true. Look and at he, the fight no, for 15. He won 2016 because his ideas are, you know, are setting, you know, like, yep. you know, the bar for the Democratic I, Party. I've been saying that here for you know, last couple so of years. So he won on that one. But you know, the thing with Bernie that we've got to look at is like, you know, let's look at his 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 history in Washington. Uh -huh. Yeah, he has been uncompromising, but this revolution isn't one person. He keeps talking about the revolution. You've got to work with others. You got to play well with mm. others. And I think that's where Warren will, you know. Well, he believes he that the change comes from outside, that he's going to be not just commander in chief, but organizer in chief, and that these people in Washington are hopeless. So we got to get the, the rise in the people to make and, to get it done. And then me, I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he would know. He's been there a very long yeah. time. So yeah. <laughs> he would know what his colleagues are yeah. like. This I, is true. I think he's probably right. All right, well, thank you so Ladies, much, Steve. Thank you. We appreciate thank you both. You. Tomorrow on Rising, YouTuber Michael Brooks, he will break down the latest political news with us. And Team Rising will be back in the house. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We are at Hill TV Live. And of course, subscribe to the Hill to Hills YouTube channel. Make sure to click that bell so you get notified when we post new content. We're really grateful for all of you watching. Have a great day. See you tomorrow.